If you're anything like me, i.e. a passionate fan of realistic racing games with an Xbox or a Windows 10 PC, you likely know that Microsoft's flagship driving simulator, Forza Motorsport 7, received its final update this past August, and with that release, Turn 10 Studios has officially ended work on the game. This may initially seem like bad news for anyone looking to enjoy a realistic and content-rich driving experience on their Xbox, considering that it means that no new improvements or features will be added to the game from this point forward, but this metaphorical cloud does have a silver lining. With Turn 10 Studios uninhibited by the current title, they are now able to devote all their energy to building the sequel, Forza Motorsport 8. Considering that the studio is breaking from its bi-yearly release schedule in order to have more development time for the game, hopes are high that Forza 8 will surpass expectations and provide a truly next-generation automotive experience on Microsoft's next console. That said, considering the spotty track record the series has had throughout this console generation, there are also concerns that the game will fall into the same potholes that have plagued the series for years. With this in mind, here are eight things we don't want to see in Forza Motorsport 8. When Forza Motorsport 5 was released in 2013, many longtime fans were shocked to see that the car list was cut down to less than half of that of the previous game. Turn 10 blamed this stripped back roster on not only having to rebuild each car from scratch for the game's Forza Vista feature, but also having to do so by a strict deadline in order to be a launch title for the Xbox One. Though each sequel since has added hundreds of cars to the current generation roster, there are still shocking absences in the car list, and with Forza 8 likely to be a launch title for Microsoft's next generation console, many fans of the series are understandably concerned that history might repeat itself. With this in mind, we don't want to see any egregious vehicle absences in the game at launch. After eight years of waiting for vehicles like the Koenigsegg CCX, Ferrari 599 GTB, and the Lamborghini Murcielago LP640 to move beyond the Xbox 360, there are no excuses for why these and other vehicles remain absent in the current console generation. And short of a major licensing issue, like the one turned in experience with Porsche, there should be no problem getting these cars back into the franchise. Fingers crossed that Forza 8 will fill this content void. And speaking of which... While the comparatively bare-bones car list in Motorsport 5 was a shock to some, many others were disappointed to learn that a similar void was present in the course list, with only a handful of tracks available at launch. Though a few tracks were later added in the form of free downloadable content, the track list was still a bit on the thin side, lacking many fan favorites like Maple Valley and Fujimi Kaido. Even after two additional entries in the series, many beloved tracks remain absent on any current generation game in the Forza franchise. Understandably, we are concerned that when Forza 8 rolls out, we will be disappointed to discover that our favorite courses are once again missing in action, and we don't want to have to keep telling ourselves, maybe next time, for game after game after game. Considering that many of these tracks, like Sedona Raceway and Camino Viejo, are fantasy tracks created by the developers, licensing should not be any real issue. And with this in mind, there really is no excuse for not being able to drift your skyline down the hairy switchbacks of Japan's Fujimi Kaido in Forza 8. Ever since Gran Turismo firmly established realistic racers as a console mainstay, Games in the genre have been known for the painstaking effort they take to depict the world of motorsport in realistic ways. As a result, realistic driving games have often blazed the trail for realistic visuals, and Forza is no exception. The meticulous detail and complex structures in each laser-scanned vehicle and the light-based reflections of those details in Forza 7 highlight the pinnacle of modern video game graphics. However, while racing sims have become known for their realistic visuals, they have also become notorious for graphical inconsistencies between cars and environments. And once again, the Forza franchise is no exception. While Forza may have breathtakingly advanced lighting effects and car models, many aspects of the track environments are shockingly primitive by comparison. Trees and bushes are rendered as flat, two-dimensional cutouts that are placed perpendicularly to one another to give the illusion of a three-dimensional object, 
and while the effect is often fairly convincing during normal gameplay despite its simplicity, a closer look reveals just how out of place they are in a game that takes such a large amount of pride in its visuals. Also, because the trees are rendered as texture cutouts as opposed to 3D objects, the lighting effects don't bounce off of them realistically, often resulting in these objects looking as if they were photoshopped into the background as an afterthought, rather than being physical objects existing in the game world. It's not just trees, though. Crowds are also primitive, often being rendered as flat, motionless, low-resolution images of people that individually pivot on their axis in an unconvincing attempt to hide their two-dimensional nature. Ironically, a franchise that prides itself on pushing graphical fidelity and realism still relies on graphical elements akin to the original Doom, except I'd argue that even Doom was more advanced, as the 2D pivoting demons in the 1993 first-person shooter could at least move around and make different facial expressions. These shortcuts were somewhat forgivable in Forza 5, considering its launch title status, but as the series and developers have spent more time on current-gen hardware, it is becoming harder and harder to forgive, especially considering that Forza Motorsport 3 and Forza Motorsport 4 were both able to render 3D crowds and foliage on the Xbox 360, all while maintaining high graphical fidelity and 60 frames per second. With this in mind, we don't want to see any of these cardboard cutouts in Forza 8, especially considering that the franchise has done such a fantastic job of including other immersive visual details such as fog, confetti, and flying helicopters. If the developers can get these details across, there's no reason why trees and crowds cannot be rendered as fully 3D objects that move dynamically with the environment, especially on the next-gen Xbox console. For the past decade, the Forza franchise has prided itself on various things that the developers feel separate it from the crowd, including the game's identity as a realistic racer that is accessible to everyone, from hardcore sim fans to people who have never played a racing game before. Along with this accessibility, Turn 10 often highlights the ability to customize all cars inside and out, altering everything from bumpers to camber to aspiration conversions. While this is technically true, the system has remained virtually unchanged since Forza Motorsport 3, and many cars don't have any additional upgrade options beyond those in the 2009 title. We understand the, if it isn't broken, don't fix it mentality that the developers may have with regards to the upgrade system, but the virtually non-existent alterations to the old upgrade system have resulted in the system itself being subpar in the current console generation. In fact, some cars, like the 2010's version of the Ford Shelby GT500, actually have fewer customization options, and many known exploits in the upgrade system have persisted for years despite the fact that the developers know they exist. Considering how much effort is put into so many other aspects of the franchise, the copy-paste nature of this system is all the more egregious in its datedness, and we absolutely do not want to see it lazily duplicated into Forza Motorsport 8. Instead, we want to see fixes to long-standing exploits in the upgrade system, we want to see vastly increased visual customization, and we want to see an increased amount of conversion options that will allow players to not only twin-turbocharge their car, but also allow them to downgrade it with less powerful engines in order to allow their cars to compete in races in lower performance indexes. Throw in a greatly increased number of body kits and tuning options, and you have a game that we may even consider pre-ordering instead of waiting for a sale. Welcome to the Forza Motorsport 3 storefront, where you can buy tuning setups, paint jobs, and vinyl groups. Possibly the most disappointing omission in current-gen Forza games for longtime fans of the franchise is its lack of available multiplayer and community features. Features such as the storefront allowed players to showcase their creative works and make in-game currency off of their painstakingly created paint jobs and tuning setups, and although they are still able to do so to some degree, the absence of the original, straightforward marketplace limits their ability to take control over their labor of love. Similarly, the current lack of custom public servers continues to be one of the single biggest gripes of many longtime fans, in large part due to the fact that it prevents the community from being able to actively control how they want to experience the game, resulting in an epidemic of randomized hoppers filled with rammers and trolls intent on ruining the experience for everyone else.
Considering that the auction house has made a recent return in current Gen Forza titles, it seems that Turn 10 Studios is making an effort to implement these features, but we don't want them to be gradually dripped out over the course of several games. The return of custom public lobbies and other features in Forza 8 would be welcomed with open arms by the entire fanbase, and would ultimately repair a large amount of the goodwill the franchise has lost after years of underhanded DLC implementation and stripped-back simulation. If only because it would alleviate the infamous first-turn pileup. Power, style, and panache, the Ferrari 250 series exemplifies an exotic classic. While there are many features in current-gen Forza games that have been criticized for their conspicuous absence, one feature that has given us at Dang Swank a reason to take a ride on the X-Bone Express for our racing fix is the inclusion of the Forza Vista feature on all vehicles. The ability to open the hood of a Chevrolet Corvette while listening to the game's narrator detail the history of America's iconic sports car is both an informative and enjoyable break from overtaking BMWs and hitting apexes on the track. However, while the Forza Vista feature itself is technically present in all current-gen motorsport games, the narration was conspicuously absent from Forza 7, leaving many players, including Jake Baldino from Game Ranks, understandably disappointed. One other little nitpick though, if, if you care, Forza Vista is a bit less now with no car history narration, and I miss that. It's a little thing, but I just wanted to bring that up. Similarly, we at Danksway are concerned that this will not only be the case for Forza Motorsport 8, but that the Forza Vista feature itself will be stripped back even further in order to ensure a launch title release for the shiny new Series X console. The main draw of a new console generation is the opportunity for increased depth and detail, not only in the form of graphical fidelity, but also in the form of gameplay and new features, so a stripped back Forza Vista will more likely than not be a deal breaker for us. Instead, we want to see Turn 10 take advantage of this opportunity for increased depth by vastly expanding the Forza Vista feature to include individualized narration for all vehicles in Forza 8. It may be a lot more effort on the part of the narrator and in turn more costly, but if done correctly, it would be a unique selling point both for the game and the console it launches alongside, and may very well pay for itself on launch day. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Le Mans win, the 2017 Ford GT, like the original, merges racing tradition with modern technology. Any single issue or unwanted alteration mentioned so far has dealt with specific aspects of the motorsport games, varying from stripped back car content to cardboard cutouts for trees. However, as hindering as any of these issues might be to Forza 8 alone, together they represent mere symptoms of the main problem. That problem being the few steps forward, few steps backward nature of the entire franchise. Through the entirety of its existence, the motorsport series has suffered from being a mixed bag from game to game with some beloved content and features either only incrementally improved or heavily improved at the expense of stripping away other beloved content and features from sequel to sequel. For example, the Forza Vista feature was introduced in Forza Motorsport 4, but was only available in a small handful of cars, and though the feature was expanded to include all cars in Forza Motorsport 5, it did so at the expense of the car list, which was cut down to less than half of that of the previous game. Similarly, Forza 7 has a much larger number of cars than the prior games in the series, but the Forza Vista mode has been severely stripped back compared to its predecessor, Forza Motorsport 6. Also, though Forza 7 added the ability for weather to change throughout a race, it was only available for a few select tracks, and even then the variety of different weather changes available were often limited depending upon the track itself. Furthermore, there is no way to choose the specific conditions for the non-rain day and night modes of the weather selection. Instead, the game chooses the specific weather conditions randomly, meaning that a race set during a rainless day could be occurring during conditions varying from the crack of dawn, to a sunny morning, to a cloudy mid-afternoon, and there's no way for players to change it. These issues, along with several others like the stripped back single player and minimal inclusion of both new content and returning features in the game, mean that Forza Motorsport 7 has been largely seen as more akin to a $60 update than a legitimate sequel. With this in mind, we hope Turn 10 abandons this minimal improvement approach as it develops Forza Motorsport 8. Instead, we want to see all missing content and features from prior games in the series added back and drastically improved. Additionally, we want new content and features fans have wanted for ages to be implemented cohesively with past and modern content and features in the game, 
ensuring that it wouldn't be doomed to exist as a disappointing launch title or to be remembered only for fixing a few problems that shouldn't have existed in the first place. A complete overhaul would ensure that Forza Motorsport 8 would transcend the holdups that have plagued the franchise over the life of the Xbox One, and perhaps even allow the game to surpass Forza Motorsport 4 as the most beloved entry in the whole series. And then you would get more and more adventures. Here at Dankswank, we try to stay optimistic and maintain a glass-half-full attitude regarding video games, but even we have to admit that the current microtransaction-laden state of the gaming industry makes it difficult for us to stay positive. This difficulty expands to our thoughts on the Forza franchise, and considering the microtransaction implementation in Forza Motorsport 4 and borderline EA level of exploitative DLC usage in Forza 5, corporate greed has all too often compromised the artistic vision of these games. With this in mind, it's hard not to feel cynical about Forza Motorsport 8. Despite claims from developers that they broke off of their typical release schedule in order to make the eighth game in the series as good as it could be, it's hard to shake the notion that they actually did so just so the game could be used as a launch title to sell the towering and monolithic Xbox Series X. More depressing still is the concern that, in order to increase profits on the shiny next-gen Xbox, Microsoft will use its vice-like grip on the Motorsport franchise to ensure that the Series X is the only console that can play Forza 8. Considering that this is the exact scenario that happened with Forza Motorsport 5, we cannot help but worry that Forza 8 will suffer the exact same fate. With this in mind, I want to make it absolutely clear to anybody at Microsoft or Turn 10 that might happen to be watching this video that no fan of the series wants this to happen. And though we realize that the draw of an even more graphically impressive Forza game with non-existent load times is incredibly tempting, it won't be enough to get many people, including ourselves, to shell out $500 plus on a next-gen console just for the privilege. Considering that many players opted to stick with Forza Motorsport 4 when a similar situation happened in 2013 with the Xbox One only Forza 5, we're hoping that the financial toll from this morally questionable business decision will convince Microsoft to instead do a multi-generational release of the game similar to what Rockstar did with Grand Theft Auto V. After all, if Forza 8 is as fantastic as we're hoping it will be, we'll be happy to wait through long load times to play it on our Xbox One, and if the graphical and performance improvements brought by the Series X are really as impressive as Microsoft has declared them to be, there's no question that, once the console has a sizable library of other games available and a more palatable price tag, we'll be happy to play Forza Motorsport 8 on that next-gen box too. So there you have it. Those are the eight things we don't want to see in Forza Motorsport 8. Do you guys have anything that you don't want to see in Forza 8 or any improvements that you want to see with the new console generation? Please feel free to let us know in the comments, check out our Patreon, and make sure to like and subscribe to see more videos like this from Dankswank, the classiest cavern on the World Wide Web.